Hello. Hello, everyone. Hi, Lottie. Isaac Ellis in the chat. Just getting set up here. Just making sure the sound. Yep, sounds coming through. Great. Okay, well, I'll get right to it. Um, thank you, everyone, for tuning in today. We're live from Norwich. Or well, I am on one of the hottest days of the year, so I um, hope you've got something cold in your hand from the fridge. Um, as I'm sure you're aware, tonight is the second international poetry reading. The first event was wonderful. I'm really excited to hear everyone that you're joining us tonight. We're very lucky to be joined by Isabel Baffy from London, Ellen Dillon from Limerick in Ireland, Mira Matter from London, uh, Jonah Mixon Webster from Flint in Michigan, and hosted by Kai Draper. The Kai Draper's born in South London, but based in Norwich. Um, the event's also been selected by Kai, but I don't think I mentioned last time. And he probably won't give himself much of an introduction. So I thought I should quickly mention that his work appears in forthcoming publications, or will appear, from Lighthouse Journal, Bad Plasma Press, Leslie Magazine, Lama Gear, and others. Before lockdown, if you're in Norwich, you might have seen him hosting free poetry workshops at the Book Hive. Last time he was in a splendid seat. Um, sorry if anyone's tuned in just to see Kai in his suit again, but um, I hope you'll forgive him. It's quite hot. Uh, but I'm sure he looks just as dapper. I'm going to pass over to him now. He'll be leading the evening. I'll be back at the end for a little bit more. Um, so I hope you enjoy. And smooth changeover. Hello. Am I there? I think I must be. Yeah, you're up. Cool. Hey, everybody. Um, Great to see some people there in the chat. Hey, Maggie, that's my auntie Maggie is there. She's a poetry stalwart. Lottie and Isaac are there. Hello, Rupert. Hello, Emily. Um, cool. Good to see everyone. Um, thanks for joining on this. You can see I'm looking slightly bedraggled, very hot, um, and a little bit red, maybe. Uh, yeah, like Henry said, no suit. Just the old, uh, kind of pretty much like pajamas, as pajamery as possible today. Um, so we got some amazing poets, and I hope you enjoy it. Yeah, as as Henry said, we got some great people, a real range. So pleased to have all these guys here today. Um, so thanks for them for joining. Thanks Henry for having us. Um, quickly, the order will be. I'll do a few poems now, um, then I'll hand over to Isabel, then we'll have Mira, then Jonah, then Ellen at the end. Um, have I missed anything? I don't think so. Um, so I'll get stuck in straight into a poem and I'm gonna put my computer here for that. Um, this poem is called The Ballad of Freddy. And, um, oh, hang on, sorry, I did forget something. If you are on the YouTube, if obviously you are, um, do you use the chat function? Cause it's like the only way we can get any sort of feeling of like a vibe and, you know, people being present. Cause obviously we're just speaking straight into the, into the uh, computer. Um, my mum said to me after the last one, she was like, I thought it was really good, but like, just, just stop talking about the technology so much. And, um, so I will try and do that. I just had to get that out the way quick. Um, but yeah, do use the chat because it's a really nice way of us getting a bit of like, you know, interaction basically. Um, so yeah, I'll start with a poem. Uh, this is called Ballad of Freddy. This poem came about just from some random thing I read about this vicar um, from, his, he was local um, to Norfolk. Um, he was called Harold Davidson. He was a vicar. Um, he got defrocked 
because he was supposedly cavorting with sex workers. Um, that was that wanted him getting defrocked. Um, he had a history in the theatre. So after that happened, he thought he would use his theatre skills to travel around the country with various circuses, preaching from lions' cages. Um, this is back in the day, obviously, when lions were in cages in this country. Um, one day at Skegness, he was preaching from a lion's cage. Um, and he accidentally stepped on the lion's tail. The lion attacked him, as you would, um, killed him, and then they killed the lion. And I thought that was kind of fucked up, man. Um, the lion was called Freddy. So this poem is called The Ballad of Freddy. Here I am. I am Freddy. I am Freddy. Hear me roar. Born not free, not kept well, silent, paining feet, panting in, not heat, pacing, England, circus, controller man, angry man, all times angry, men with red cheeks and whips, they use them. Here I am, I am Freddy, I am Freddy, see me wrong. I huff and I puff, I moan and I whine, I growl and I moan. I'm sick of the food here, old dog, small feathery bird, globes of mush. They whip me when I shit liquid, the injustice. Here I am, I am Freddy, I am Freddy, taste my shame. I never knew what I was here for. Never known anything but cartwheeling, smackerers, tortling, gawkers, petticoats, hoisted for beards, bars, a feeling of needing to jump. Have you ever jumped? Me neither. Here I am. I am Freddy. I am Freddy. Touch me here. He stood on my tail. What the fuck? Of course I had to do what I had to. Think wasn't happening. Did what you do. Shot to the reflex. Tight along tendons. My teeth in his neck meet. Shook out the conscience. Blood on the punters. Blood on the parquet. Blood in the rafters. I am Freddy. Here I am. I am Freddy. I am Freddy, smell my fear. Thanks. That's the end of that. Um, and this is the weird bit uh, where there's just silence. <laughs> um, cool. I will read the next poem. This poem is for my sisters, Rachel and Sean, if you're out there, um, love you. And this poem is called, it's a bit past now because one of them has since had a baby and the other one is now 10 days overdue. But this is called, My Sisters Are Telling Me They're Pregnant. My sisters are telling me they're pregnant. I wanna go cycling. It is good for the environment. When each one told me I acted different, I loved them uniquely the same as in family as in bloody adults, as in dead whales. Change occurs in other heads only. I wanna buy equipment. I go along with it all as in jokes, as in where to shop to save the planet. Too many things are happening. I try to explain the fam to Lottie. I jockey for precision. My sisters are telling me they're pregnant. I have a hundred unread books, a line of poetry. The environment exists in the VIP suite of white inquiry. I've gone dairy free, except for butter, milk and yogurt. Everyday storms, 
everyday fortress, everyday sports direct. England tempts me as a notion. The rain today jars like a bad definition. Hashtag World Cup of Bread is in my dreams. Jeff Bezos is in my dreams. Frightened Cyclops pigs are in my dreams. My sisters are telling me they're pregnant. The receptionist is excited about using Telegram. People get away with fiction. Everyday displacement, everyday pickets, everyday extinction. Extinction Rebellion was banned from the dinner table. It didn't last two minutes. My sisters are telling me they're pregnant. Their babies will inherit their skin. Lots of my friends hate XR except Nathan. Those middle class wankers are doing an exceptional job. And my mum, they are not the enemy. The world turns burning. I am considering many options. Everyday acidification, everyday state aggression, everyday billions of edible bananas in the bin, everyday floods, everyday food banks, everyday rigor mortis muntjac on the A11. My sisters are telling me they're pregnant. Murmurations, reverberations, mirror neurons, nicotine pangs, the neighbors banging on the wall when we bang, the vilification of drill, the cloud, the spying, the ground, the sky, the doorway. Everything is not fine. My sisters are telling me they're pregnant. Everyone's talking about everything all the time. I send photos of the scans to the group. Cool. Well, that's that one. Um, thanks, everybody. Um, this weird silence. <laughs> uh, as normal. Sorry, mum, I can't help it. Like, uh, I have to comment on it. It's too weird not to. Anyway, let's move on. Um, so next up, we're going to have Isabel. Isabel Baffey is a writer and poet from London. She was the winner of the 2019 Vincent Cooper Literary Prize and was shortlisted for the 2019 Oxford Brooks International Poetry Competition. Um, she is, I've just seen that Zara is on the call and that's really exciting. Hey. Um, where did I get to? She is also a member of London's L London Library's Emerging Writers Programme 2019-20. Her work has been published or is forthcoming in Poetry Review, Magma, Finished Creatures and elsewhere. Her debut pamphlet, which is very exciting because that is imminent, will be published in autumn, uh, this autumn by Ignition Press. Um, so that's Isabel. I met Isabel at a workshop She's a don, she's a big thinker, she's very conscientious, she writes amazing poems. Um, I'm now gonna do the thing with the text. Uh, where we go, like this. Um, that works? No. Uh, yeah, I just clicked it as well, shit. Uh, All right, I'll now mute myself. And then yeah. spotlight video. Cool. Okay. Hey, Isabel. Um, right. Over to you. Yeah. Am I on? Okay. You can see me. You can hear me. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Um, hi, everyone. Um, it's lovely to be here. First of all, thank you to Jonathan and Assembly House um, for arranging this event. Thank you to Kai um, for inviting me. Um, yeah, it's really exciting and um, things like this, I think, are so cool. Um, you know, obviously, uh, lockdown has been like a million years long and we're all apart and everything. So it's nice to be able to connect through things like this. Um, I'm not going to talk too much. Um, I'm going to read a couple poems from the pamphlet, which is coming out in the autumn. Um, so the main theme of it is hunger, um, and not just in terms of physical hunger, although there's plenty of food. I'm thinking about hunger as like a propelling force in terms of uh, how it propels us, how it moves us, um, how it, um, the things we are hungry for and the 
people that we're hungry for and how the things that inspires in us and you know the ways that we connect and um, and change and form and destroy and rebuild ourselves so there's a lot going on but anyway so the first poem that I'm going to read is called Ouroboros it was initially called webcam and obviously I changed it since then but then when I was invited I thought this is too perfect um, because obviously you're seeing me through a webcam so this is Ouroboros. And for those of you who don't know, an Ouroboros is an ancient symbol of a snake eating its own tail. Um, sometimes it's two snakes eating each other's tail. So yeah, this is that. The chat room is a children's sandbox pulsating with snakes. Every now and then the graphic spasm, sparkles flashing us, messages poke out from the hem of the screen. Some thirst should not be quenched. But here at least, my 14F London is everything. I type him back to mine most days, my school skirt flung across a chair, the pleats lackluster too, puzzling algebraic all the ways I am divided. If X is a secret cam girl, what is her value? Does X even know who X is? If she does, why doesn't she reveal herself? Why is she always revealing herself? My panties peeling off like scabs, the flesh beneath still tender, pink, naively soft in a world that chafes. I can't not do this. Hunger made me, carved me in its image, hands with which to touch, touch, and a tongue to taste and a belly, his, in which to bury myself. Hunger made me do it. Seasoning my pubescent veal, my fatty flesh and oil brushed hips, my raw hide marinated in red lace and violet glitter, the, the skin around my eyebrows sore and bumpy, freshly tweezed. Logging on because Eyesworth's hills aren't high enough to jump off, failing each day to shed the heft of me. I once heard a woman say, an apple chooses where it falls, but not who eats it. But why would the apple care? The only purpose of an apple is to be eaten. The honey trap waits all day for the bear. And the body that doesn't eat for long enough will eat itself. It learns to gather strength from its destruction. Swallow me and I'll fill you up and pretend that fullness is mine. Tell me to suck my thumb like a child and I'll tell you how I taste. The final spasm fades, eyes open. She sees nakedness, her own. She covers herself, closes the chat, but because of a delay, she's still there, filling his screen like a mouse in an unhinged jaw. Even now, years later, I sometimes feel like I'm being watched. I tell my friends, they say it's the Holy Spirit. Even now, sometimes I Google myself and scroll through pages of headshots, holiday smiles, achievements since, my gnawing belly wondering if this time I'll see a picture of a girl who looks like me, in my old room on the same mattress I wet when I was three, leaning against a wall once coloured with crayon and rainbow stickers. A girl as black and void as pupils, wanting anything to enter, settling for light. One night while streaming shows on illegal sites, an ad pops up. A woman poised to perform, she hopes, for us. The guy I'm with kisses his teeth, devours the last slice of pizza. Tells me how relieved he is that I am not like that. <sighs> okay, so that was Ouroboros. Um, Okay, all right, my next poem, next poem that I'm gonna read. Um, oh, and I should mention that the phrase, the only purpose of an apple is to be eaten is a direct quote from my friend and the amazing poet, Alice Hiller. So thank you, Alice, for that lovely gem. Um, the next poem I'm gonna read is called Paint My Shadow White. And there's a lot that I could say about this poem, so much, but I think for the sake of time, I'll just say that it's about a family member who was adopted as a baby. Um, and who, ex he was adopted, obviously he's black, and he was adopted by a white family and he experienced a lot of ill treatment and racist treatment at the hands of that family. Um, and later on in his life, he experienced a lot of mental health issues and he was sadly institutionalized and partly because of the impact of his upbringing. So this poem 
um, is about that. And I should mention that there's several voices in the poem. So it's, yeah, it may sound a little weird. Okay, this is Paint My Shadow White for Desmond. A hand rips the sky open. Clouds chase me through alleys, spit on me with every step. I report it, but they call it rain. Who did this puddle used to be? Orphanus in Sanus Africanus. Adopted by a scar of people, swaddled by something akin to love. Kinky haired bastard, mewling pup. Children fear the dark because they know it's always hungry. They see it in some grown up's eyes, they smell it on the arms that coil around them are obsidian for the mantelpiece. Sometimes I bite the inside of my mouth, disappearing fragments of myself, trying to escape the stench of every impure thought, coveting the white after wet dreams, our muscovado crumbling in our tea. My reflection avoids my gaze. I press my palms and teeth, eyeballs and foot soles to the glass. These my whitest parts at least, are worthy. The mirror welcomes them. Our blackbird peeling hangnails with its beak. I wonder what I ought to be, itching skin from within, wearing black like leather, bruised lined and marooned in barren mines. Our gollywog for frightened boys to squeeze. Dear Genesis, dear darkness upon the face, dear deep, White descends upon me, all around me, all the time. I think snow learned from them. This world is symptomatic. The patient is prone to rage and paranoia of something far more us. The patient unzips himself before bed. The patient fears dark places and therefore defaces himself. The patient is therefore most unbecoming. The patient will soon unbecome completely. Okay, so that was Paint My Shadow White. Um, how am I for time? Do I have time to do one more? Is that, that, yeah, one more? Okay. All right, awesome. Okay. So, all right, the last poem that I'm going to do is called Endomorphosis. Um, uh, this poem is, it's about the body, um, that female body, really my body, my mother's body, my mother's mother's body, and so on. Um, I have what's called an endomorph body, which means I gain weight easily. And, you know, um, it's something that I've like gone through a lot with in my life. Um, but one day I did a quiz and they were talking about different body types and they said that that kind of body type for endomorphs is the tendency to store energy probably kept your ancestors alive at one point. And I thought that was really interesting. So I wrote this poem um, you know, as a kind of reflection of that thought. So this is endomorphosis. We weigh ourselves and all that we will carry. Wonder what to lay down, what to keep what we should bear on our backs, our brows, our buttocks, what feasts to hide in breasts or hollow places in our teeth. We throw cargo to tie to lessen our load, redeem the tissue, synapse, marrow, womb. We are all trying to leave our bodies behind, but they find shore and field, ahoy, amen, virgin and yielding. We tear the crowns off fruit and share the flesh, as we have seen. We bleed oranges, milk coconuts, porridge, island gold, and hold the gaze of black-eyed peas. We eat the root, the rind, we hoard the husk. We store it in our thighs, our hips, the corners of our lips, the creases in the pits of our arms. The things that we have seen swell the pupils, bloat the blood, settle on noses, colonize cheek and jowl. What molecular greed, what fearful gluttony, what hesitant burn, what slow metabolism. We, the soft on which the falling land, we dream of diets, detoxes, cells plundered, but wake up heavy, anchor, legion, bored. We measure the past in inches, not the grains of rice we hid in our hair, 
not the rains, sorry, not the rains through which we prayed for a failed harvest, not the nights when we cut holes in bags of sugar, not the days when we licked sea breezes for salt, or how, when young but never small, we pinched the fat that clung to us, faithful through the field and mill and press and fire and sack and sea and overflowing vaults and banks as eager as my cells to never be empty. We pinched the offering ever ready to burn itself on our altar. We wrestled with the pyre that kept us alive. That's it. Um, you. And also I wanna mention as well, the phrase, um, we are all trying to leave our bodies behind is from Toni Morrison's beloved. Awesome. Thank you, Isabel. That was so good. <laughs> That was so, so beautiful. There were some amazing lines in that. In that second one, bruised, lined and marooned in barren lines. Crikey, incredible. Um, thank you, Isabel. I'm gonna mute you now. Um, so, hope you enjoyed that, folks. Next up, we have Mira, Mira Matar. Uh, I met Mira at a reading that my partner Lottie organised in Great Yarmouth. Um, that was a that was quite a night. Um, we've since been in an email chain thing, Mira, Ellen, and I, and um, it's been amazing. Incredible poet. So it's really glad she's here today. Um, this is the official version. Uh, Mira Matar is a writer, editor, and tutor. She has recently had work published in Zarf and Data Bleed. A new work is forthcoming in Tenebrae. I'm in there with you, baby. Uh, and On Care from Ma Bibliotheque. Her first chapbook, Affiliation, will be published with Sad Press in 2021. Uh, she lives uh, in Forest Hill in South East London. Um, yeah, so that's Mira, hopefully. Um, we can now pass over to her. Am I, is it happening? I'm spotlit. You're big. Everyone can, it's on, it's happening. Okay, hello. And um, thank you Kai for the introduction and the invitation and Henry also for um, organizing this event. And thank you, Isabel, that was amazing. Um, and Ellen and Kai for the email um, poetry sharing that we've been doing, it's been really, um, helpful and inspiring. Um, okay, I'm not gonna say too much more because I'm not very good at it. So I'm going to read three things. The first is just a short quote from Paolo Frez. I don't think I'm saying his name right. From his 1968 book, The Pedagogy of the Oppressed. Okay, <clears throat> and then I'm gonna read two poems of my own. I'm seeing something in the chat, cool. Well, you can tell me if I've said his name wrong later. Okay, so, for the oppressors, however, it is always the oppressed, whom they obviously never call the oppressed, but depending on whether they are fellow countrymen or not, those people or the blind and envious masses or savages or natives or subversives who are dis disaffected, who are violent, barbaric, wicked, or ferocious when they react to the violence of the oppressors. Yet it is paradoxical though it may seem precisely in the response of the oppressed to the violence of their oppressors that a gesture of love may be found. Consciously or unconsciously, the act of rebellion by the oppressed, an act which is always or nearly always as violent as the initial violence of the oppressors can initiate love. I also just want to say, I'm not sure if I agree with him about what his uh, designation of what is human, but that's probably for a different Zoom conversation. Not that this is a conversation. I suppose it is. My God, this is maddening, Kai. I see what you mean. Okay. Okay, I'm going to read. Um, I don't usually do unfinished things, but I'm going to give it a shot. So I'm writing something long that doesn't have a title. Um, and I'm going to read the first couple of pages. That gulf again, 
I am a raw egg rolling towards its incredible mouth. The chasm that ends language. I clutch the sides of the kitchen. The floor goes, my stomach exits. You are not my friends. Having never considered anything from a different head, hanging out the window, having never had to consider, having never scoured under the bed, digging with your own skull, scooping the earth out for clues, laying with foxes, kicking in metal bins, so every time you pass, you know at least that dent is you. Me, I took what I didn't have and placed it inside myself, not knowing it at all or what, or what it would render upside down on the backs of my eyeballs. I thought casting it out was a kind of safety, but it burnt my esophagus on its way back up, having never left. None of this means I want it or do not want it. It's there and so am I. Sure, sometimes I hear voices. It doesn't bother me because I don't need to know which one is mine. When I was small, this hurt me, always searching, getting my finger sliced off by a tin can I was trying to use as a telephone, always distracted. If I could only just then finally I'll, no verb, no noun, no going, no home. I know some of you feel it too, under under your t-shirts, like catching sight of your reflection when you didn't mean to be looking. Curved, distorting over a car window, swirling in oil, in the mirrored glaze of the city, in its smashed glass, there you are, reflecting the burning sky. I betrayed myself all the way to Sally Ann's, peeked into the eyes of her mother's golden dog and saw the bombastic confidence of owning her, of ownership, of naming. I laid my hand upon her head and asked for a non-betrayal of non-self that wouldn't resolve in pride or sameness or high definition or edginess or jamming the cream whip right up the right up the nostrils and snorting, or stuffing your head deep in the honeysuckle and getting it stung, or getting full from licking the oily puddle, or getting big from saying he was small, or getting power from turning against how we eat with our hands sometimes. Calm down, who is the psychopath? Your parents eat pizza with utensils. Brother, I know your country, your eyes in the rear view mirror. I dunk my head in the chemical, I know we are not the same. I suffer the English deserts. I was concave with wanting Annabelle. If Annabelle meant white toast at the wooden table, laughter, a dead pig on Sundays. If Annabelle meant being in the world without a viscose film around you all the time, pressing your fingers through but never piercing, mysterious, haunted, intriguing. I'm just alone. Stripping my nightie off, sleeping in my uniform, parents threatening to out me, laughing audaciously, the stand-up immigrant. Suck yourself in, Jeffrey is coming. Or have you forgotten the Arab slave trade, the Ethiopian domestic workers in Lebanon, until three women, an Iranian, an Indian, and a Palestinian walk into a bar, agreeing on starches, diverging on fats. You were what I needed most, being the longest joke. I disagree with everything you say, but being in a car with you feels like the cling film is totally off. Let's go faster. I'm completely alone. I'm completely alone. Here comes little Jamie to call you that word. Grab him, push him down, kick his face. Oh, I wanted to, but my edges were a blur. I couldn't tell when my skin met anything, so I couldn't hear it when she said that in the kitchen, blue eyes sneering. That it wasn't that she didn't like me, it's just that she could only do it from above me, forcing me to crack my neck. Hey, I can spit sideways, right into the wind of your lovability. So I went to who was defined, to, to who walked boldly in and out of rooms, conversations, traffic, universities, restaurants, swinging their attributes, spreading their influence. I went and I knelt and I wept and I begged at the feet of misunderstanding. I denied it. I never wrote an Arab name in my summer diary. 
Every day was one of my hundreds of cousins, while my ugly heart tap, tap, tapped against my ribs. What you did not pil pillage is what was made, sorry, what you did not pillage needs you as much as you need it. Nothing needs me to do anything but shut up is what was made clear to me in love letters and institutional communications. I get to sit here silently with my own email address and the power to have power over others was never what I thought this dream was for. So that's the end that isn't the end. Um, and the second one is a complete poem. <laughs> uh, this has got uh, some sexual violence and regular well, other violence in it. It's called Naker, which is, um, I think I'm pronouncing that right, which is um, another word for mother of pearl. So. <clears throat> I've eaten enough ice cream on both sides of the other woman's other woman enough times to know who is not welcome in the androgynes commune. Who has not scraped smashed baked beans off someone else's kitchen ceiling, their dark curls catching fire enough times to know that all our eyes have quivered at the sight of all our mothers and all our mother's eyes have quivered enough times at the sight of all of theirs. And when I meet the paramour's mother or the best friend's mother with that metallic butterfly in her hair on the one zillion night buses home from Hackney at dawn after half fucking someone else's someone or on the doorstep of my baby home, I have quaked and hidden my fat thighs enough times. I've been both sides of, oh, you're that Mira upstairs at the Funky Monkey in patent white Mary Jane's. All day I watched a rose unfurling today, like all roses, its bloom to me looks exhausted. Here, I've only just started. The spoon is halfway out her mouth. I'm bleeding and there is a hot yellow towel over my shoulders, over which my wet hair is spread. You can catch cold from a damp back. I see myself with, with hair to my waist at my little red kitchen table extending its wings and waiting for you all, you blondes, you tall women, you slim ones, you doctors of sophistry, you mothers, you who turn the cards and smirk because you want what I have or have what I want or know what I want and will never have, though now I am needless as spring. You who say how I see more mature as you crush the butt with your real leather ankle boot, twist me in my buttery trainers. Fuck, my brain is expanding outside bank tube. This guy's hand is on my throat in a beer garden in Finsbury Park. His hands are slipping between my date tights and girl skirt. He better not ladder them. They're low denier and my mum's. He's crushing my curls with his white Christmas fingers. He is telling me how I feel and how I seem fairly intelligent and exotic somewhat. Can I speak the other language? Say some dirty words, baby. Am I a naughty Muslim? I whisper the recipe to the Molotov cocktails my father threw. I knee him in the face with the back of my elbow, lick my brass knuckles as he squats in the gutter looking for his cocaine, my tongue enjoying the ridges. This is Amy's pretty dress. This is a cute lilac bra from the La Senza sale. This is not what binds or unbinds us. You are a spectacular baby, blue field of irises, hot yellow certain tongues. You in your pink polo neck and brown leather jacket, little wispy hairs. You in your Barry M white eyeliner. You, the kind one. I'm twice your size and I don't know how to stop it. If I fuck him quietly in your spare room, Maybe I'll stop wanting your herb garden and impeccable waist. I am very unraveling under a sick spring sky. I cross 300 bridges, Lambeth Palace, Westminster Abbey, Tate Britain, the Hayward Gallery, the Tower of London, that sandwich shop we love to go to, you who taught me how to draw, who, talk, who taught me how to see, 
you, I love you. I'm a fat pigeon fighting a shrinking. Come round, I like your drawings is all. How they have no background to locate the objects in, to weigh them down. And yet the objects don't seem like they're floating. I don't need to pretend I don't like them. I don't need to feel like I don't exist. You know I alone am getting older. Stop rubbing it in. Your eternal breast keeps reduplicating under 30. Girls keep getting born. Look, my daddy never combed my hair. My mummies made their subtle and white and crushed me backwards into the sink to make me the same and pretty like a European chemical. Indefensible, I cry. I learned this alone, I said for years and yes, but you were there too, casually emboldened by mid-morning baths, by rolling your eyes audibly at the boys, by not letting them use your body as a shield against what they themselves have done to you and others. Like how clear day after clear day after clear day, clouds are spectacular. Thank you. Crap. That's the end that was amazing. <laughs> Thanks, Mira. Um, were you talking about the funky monkey in Camberwell? I was. <laughs> oh my days. <laughs> that is the site of some shocking memories. <laughs> but what a lovely reference. Yeah. Uh, Mira, that was amazing. Thank you so much. Um, Thanks. I'm going to... Uh, take me away. Thank take you. you away. Yeah, thanks again. Um, Cool. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, next up, we have Jonah Mixon Webster, um, who is tuning in. Last time we were in contact, um, he was in Alabama, uh, but he's from Flint, Michigan. Um, so, I'll, well, Jonah can tell you more about where he is if he wants to, but I'll do the official one. Um, I would just like to say quickly, um, this Jonah being here today is like, thank God for the internet kind of vibes. I've, I've sort of discovered, that's the wrong word, um, first read Jonah's poems um, on the internet. He won a huge award and I just saw his name and looked into it. And then there's just these mind blown poems that do crazy thing on the page. And he works with cinema and video a lot and well, dot, dot, dot is all I'm going to say. Uh, so official. Jonah Mixon Webster is a poet, educator and interdisciplinary artist from Flint, Michigan. His debut collection, Stereotype, received the 2017 Sawtooth Poetry Prize um, from Asata Press, the 2019 Pen America or Joyce Osterweil Award and was a finalist for the 2019 Lambda Literary Award for Gay Poetry. He is the co-leader of the Pen America Detroit chapter and the poetry and digital arts editor for Obsidian Literature and Arts in the African Diaspora. He is the recipient of the Wyndham Campbell Prize for Poetry and fellowships from Vermont Studio Center, Center for African American Poetry and Poetics, Images and Voices of Hope, the Conversation Literary Festival and the Pen Writing for Justice program. Um, Super, super excited to have Jonah here. So glad he, he could make it. Um, and now it's time to do the thing. So. Hey, everybody. Wait, can, can everyone see me? I yeah, probably look cool. terrible. I'm sorry. I woke up a little sick today. Um, so I might be like a little congested. Uh, but hey, everybody. Um, <laughs> thanks for that introduction, uh, Kai. That was great. That was great. I actually am back in Flint. Um, I was in Alabama. Um, but now, yeah, yeah, I'm back home now. Um, so, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, please excuse my, my, uh, congestion a little bit. Uh, it's kind of bad. So I'm gonna do a couple poems, um, that are coming out, uh, soon in Harper's. Um, and I don't know, we'll see how much time, um, they're kind of short poems, but we'll see how much time we have, if, you know, I can do something else, uh. Uh, I will. Um, all right, so um, this is Weapons a Thought Could Wield. 
in the word of the mind, the mind of the word, murder, a simple premise, quick utility, pistol or cane, a wood or any metal, new money for old rope, a nail for the body, field for the coffin, a simple premise, inevitability, a shout in a gather, a rubber necking, a knowing, slew occupations, knife in a bread box, missiles in the hamper, bombs in the basement, a trap, the catch, a rumor, inevitability, a simple premise, what becomes of a mind becomes of the body, zero thought, something hard, something harder, a knowing, time and place, depth and proximity, a piece of piss, the portent, a simple premise, murder, a look at the waste, a thing to hold and a thing to be held onto, a mother's purse, your father's pockets, armories of the state, mundane ornaments, a cross for your hands, a cross for your back, the forgetting, inevitability, black sheep for burial, daylight for discovery, tokens of vengeance, a war for meaning, a war for peace, the simple premise, want, for whom, for what, nothing. Black Opis team number nine, this is what I know about blood, that when I wake in it, my body turns the earth with its gnashing, that when it appears in my piss, all streams run silent, that when I find it in my hands, I cannot recall my name. Here, I offer you a truism. I am not speaking of a cut, nor the way my gut caves into a split to touch my back to some bullet, but of what remains in the image of loss, how it is signifier and referent at once, how it pulls from my unending mouth, how at this moment I am sitting in a mess of it waiting for my own legs to stand, how I could leave it as a sign that still reads, nigger, you wasn't even here. You wasn't even here at all. Black on black stone under a white stone at the Cesar Vallejo. I will die in Flint in the early gloaming of a raid as blood honeys the fetid water. I will die in Flint in a handoff without witness on any night, perhaps. This night, I am found with a broadcloth over my teeth, a bagged object in clutch, empty water bottles at my side, a dingy horde of glooms, and whatever is left of my body now enters the day rearward. In some nature, Jonah Mixon Webster is dead and weaponless, a fortuitous echo sucking air out, a shrunk mouth portal shrilling its sole evidence of event, a darkening, then all at once, snow. Um, I know those are a little fast, um, kind of quick, so uh, maybe um looks like i might have time for uh one more uh you know signal from kai thanks kai um so um i'll uh i think is kind of being called upon me to uh to do this uh this one um this is after the poet the poet francine harris's uh piece entitled sift uh and I'm not all nigger. And I'm not all nigger. I'm not all rope. I'm not all slung neck. I'm not all broke back. I'm not all pop pop. I'm not all headshot nor jailbird. I'm not all whistled at the white girl. Not all meat slump. Not all cannon of teeth gliding across the Tallahatchie night water. Not all gun stipple and spilt blood. Not the boom of red smoke breaking the body open with a new exit wet already. And I'm not all body. I'm not all dead fruit, dark swinging in the tree breeze. And though that is my blood, I'm still not the blood on the leaves. I'm still not all hollow choke. 
Cotton mouth, hood whip, not all t-shirt slogan and hashtag. Not all don't shoot, not all I can't breathe. I'm not some orgiastic shadow of dead flesh. Cause even when I die, I'm still not all death. I'm not all brown sugar, honey pot, sour diesel, blue dream. No, I'm not all nigga, boy. I'm not all here in this same. Not all is said, not the same heart. I come not as one, nor with nothing. Still, I'm still, and I still got my name. I'm still Jeremy, I'm still Laura, I'm still Lawrence, I'm still Emmett, I'm still Mike, I'm still Marie, I'm still Jeremy, I'm still Tamir, I'm still Charlie, I'm still Freddie, I'm still Eric, I'm still Rakia, I'm still Brianna, I'm still Ayana, I'm still Walter, I'm still LaVar, I'm still Sean, I'm still Oscar, I'm still Trayvon, I'm still George, I'm still Jordan, I'm still Tommy, and I'm still George, and my mama's still my mama, and my daddy, still my daddy, and my friends are still my friends, and these are still my brothers and sisters, and I still have my house, and I still have my room, and I still have my school, and I have my job. I had my garden. I still had my life before they took that. So when you tell my story, get it right and take all my shit back. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, John. That was incredible. Thank you. And if you're feeling sick as well, bruv, you bought it. <laughs> Appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, yeah. mate. Really appreciate that. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. That was very, very powerful. Bloody hell. Whoa. That was just big, man. That was just big. <sighs> I hope you lot enjoyed that. Fucking hell, bruv. That was really. That was really amazing. Um, cool. Cool. All right. Uh, Ellen. <laughs> um, it feels weird to just segue into something else. But um, I put Jonah's website into the YouTube chat. Um, I don't think that's what the person was asking for in that moment. So my apologies. But if you want to see more of Jonah's work, just go onto his website. Um, he has books, he has videos, he has poems on the website. Uh, I really, really, really recommend. Well, I don't need to anymore, you guys know. But um, yeah, cool, all right. So Ellen, I've never met Ellen, um, even though we've been in this email chain since uh, the 1st of April. Um, it just sort of was a Twitter coincidence or like happy accident that um, we all started emailing each other every day uh, and it was brilliant and Ellen is an unbelievably good poet um, she hopefully is she's just been doing this project um, about butter the history of butter in Ireland yes butter butter as in the thing you spread on your toast um, I seen a tiny snippet and it was really cool, uh, but hopefully she's going to give us a little bit more of that today, plus some other poems, but I'll let her talk about that. Um, here's the official. Um, Ellen Dillon is a writer and teacher from Ireland. Her pamphlet, Excavate, from Poems After Pasolini, oh no, sorry, Excavate, in brackets, Poems After Pasolini, has been published by Oyster Catch Press. Um, Achatina, Achatina, is forthcoming from Sound Eye Press and Sonnets to Malcolmus is available from Sad Press. I've read Sonnets to Malcolmus, it's very good. Um, she's also a very lovely person. Uh, so hopefully, here comes Ellen. There we are. Okay, am I on? You're on, you're up. Okay, thank you everybody. That was just incredible. Um, uh, thank you, Henry, for organizing everything and Kai for asking me to read. Um, I feel a bit silly with butter now, but anyway, I'm gonna, I'm gonna read a little bit of um, this long poem that I've been working on. And like Mira, I don't like reading things that aren't finished, but I don't think this will ever be finished. I, I started thinking about butter and I got it into my head that I would understand everything that there is to understand about Ireland and its people if I just 
read enough documents about the history of butter in Ireland. So that's what I've been doing for the last few weeks slash months and putting them together into a poem that just keeps getting longer and longer and longer. But I'm going to read a mercifully short um, bit of it today to start off. So this piece is called Milk Testing for Butterfat. And it's a collage poem that's made out of little snippets of the preceding 50 pages of poem about a thousand years of butter. Um, okay, so milk testing for butterfat. A better world is quite a pleasant thing to think about. A butter draft board and men. A circle completes itself. A compression of fresh curds. A divided community that cannot agree to keep the churn in the local creamery revolving. A factory run by highly qualified technocrats and managers. A glance under each wrapper. A land of self-sufficient peasants working for mutual advancement. A large proportion went to distant colonial markets. A pleasant thing to think about. A practical and effective institution through which a new Ireland would emerge. A story both of cooperation and non-cooperation. Always found at a great depth in old solid bogs. Among the bitter, better circumstanced. An increasingly hemmed in people an over-proliferation of creameries leading to milk wars, another air pocket in the dairy story, as creamery and cooperative have gradually become almost synonymous terms. As much future as we can plan for, as part of a year-long contract, assembly of substantial stocks of butter by dairy masters, attention to the cracks political and parochial, beholding host to guest, betrays us on the market weighing scales, black swan and golden valley, Boats full of butter for armies overseas, bog violet or butterworth, brought to the verge of famine. Butter buyers were men of modest means, butter roads in Cork, Kerry, Limerick, Tipperary, vital conduits, calves, summer milk and butter, cared little for utopian visions, carotenated salted milk fat, carrot works to build the colour. Change in the technology of butter making brought new words charged with volatile substance. Okay, that's the end of the butter bit. Um, the next things that I'm going to read all come from a book that I've just finished that I would never have finished, but for Kai and Mira and wandering into a casual um, April the 1st set of good intentions about writing poems every day so I want to say a huge thank you to both of them for making it possible to write these poems and keep it going. So um, when before I became consumed by butter I was obsessed with Stefan Mallarmé, he's like my favourite poet um, and he was a secondary school teacher and often very miserable in his job and I am also that person so I feel a strong affinity with him sometimes. Um, so he wrote this book um, that used a grammar book, a textbook for students that used English proverbs, really weird English proverbs, a lot of which I'm not even the slightest bit familiar with, um, to make these grammar lessons to like derive rules of grammar from proverbs. Um, so I started writing, taking words, taking the, the, the proverbs that he'd used and reworking them into lots of different types of poems. And I'm going to read a couple from those now. So I'll start with one of the grammar lessons poems and then just a couple of spin offs. And the whole thing is called Morsel May Sleep, which is from one of his proverbs that I had never heard of before. So it's called Nouns woman conceal. Several very common words keep their Saxon plural. Woman conceal all. Children stand quiet. Plough before the oxen. Fear death as children. Piper a penny. Agree like brethren. And the goose to fire. And the goose make the market. So many geese and why so singular to illustrate a Saxon plural? And not all brothers are even brethren, agreeable or otherwise. Some foul-tempered fowl are hissing and spitting. There will be much more of that as time indoors goes on. A plough for a plough 
and a team of oxen would see us right right now. Tilling and growing would be something doing for and with children against death. No standing or quiet, but little fear either and no concealing. Some agreeing and more growing. Um, the next two don't have names. They're just short prose poems that we work against some of those same proverbs. Impossible for any one of us to live on a groat for a year. I mean, really. And yet here we all are beating ourselves up alone for failing to break even in this system built to break us. As even pain is not without a witness, we essay ours for silent sharing. What you haven't in your hand, you can't hold. And bearing is tiring. Trying out those words again, four of them are rotten and it's spreading to the other ones. If the devil is a vicar, he'll wed us to what doesn't die, quote the fly upon the coach to the ladybird inside. When we have nothing left to give, a Roland style peripatetic headless soldier of fortune will track us to this hiding spot to off us where we sit in thought. Hold whatever words are left, dear as two eggs, scooped intact from a fallen nest. I can't say what walls have or don't have, since I don't know what they are. Maybe they have thorns or perhaps a reticulated surface, comforting to slide the fingers over. When the evening cries, wine, or more often beer, sloshes in to fill a space whose dimensions wax and wane. When mad words overflow us, only time and pacing stem the ranting. In a fairy story, a self-aware princess might eat peas stashed under her mattress or share her hall of cherries with the beggar before moving on, making and stretching out space between herself and the closing in walls of her kingdom. In return for her slight gift, small thanks and words of well-wishing buoy her up and keep her going. She finds in time that words are leaves dappling her way and lending a film of zesty green to shield her from the blue. She palms them over in return for meat, drink and cloth, saving the best and most considered ones to savour over the bread of a day, sometimes broken with a companion, but more often alone. In either case, she doesn't miss wine or the priest. And this is the last one that I'm going to read. And it's also the last one of that group of poems. And it is called um, Melt Song. Sorry, just in some water. Okay. Words and no deeds never can fill a sack, only slump glumly alongside an empty one waiting to be picked up and brandished or bundled. We live on the far side of where the animals are now. So sometimes we must play the fox, vex boatmen with their, stacks, their sacks of grain and poultry, trick gingerbread men, set all at sixes and sevens amongst the doom, doomsday chickens. We've been taught to count our worth in baked goods and dairy. Five loaves a penny tells us it's a buyer's market set to make fat wolves of the prowling boyos. Owl thinks her young too good for the mess of hormone and ritual clogging the air in the rooms where we go for schooling to learn our place and how to move in it. She still thinks they will learn wisdom by the follies of others, fly without falling or failing. But if women conceal all or conspire to hide the tangling links or chains of stops and starts that string together in learning any single thing, Children stand quiet, still and quite, quite vacant. Dead lice dropped out of their feathered heads once and were just left unremarked and uneaten. If she is right that the devil is in dice, the sin is in the rolling. Every deed seeds five other chains of movement, one of stasis. Each word chosen leaves others adrift to clog the air with their six-legged corpses. 
Idle people take this so much to heart, it stops them in their tracks. Words just know who is afraid to use them. So the ones who think silk makes the difference between fitting in and falling out will find it is not in the end, the feeling, but the movement and the reaching that shakes them out of silence, sends them stumbling and shivering to the world's end and beyond. Swarms of paper wasps haunt these roiling plains. Copper colored live ones come in pudding time to feed on molten sugar and sting us into singing. And that's me, thank you very much. Amazing, thank you, Ellen. Oh, what's that noise? Oh, phantom noises. Thank you so much, that was so great. Can't wait to read, wait to read that, that longer butt poem. Um, is, how long is it, just out of curiosity? It is currently standing at about 67 pages. <laughs> so, so be careful what you wish for. And, and that's shows, one poem, is that one poem? It's, um, it's, it's in lots of different sections, it's a sequence. Okay, cool. A thousand years, yeah. A thousand years of history. Yeah, yeah, a thousand years, yeah. Feels like actual real time thousand years. <laughs> Thanks, Helen. Uh, swapping it back. Um, cool. That was fucking awesome. Ah, that was so good. Um, um, so I hope you guys like um, appreciated the range. Obviously, you know, you got five, four uh, different, very different, but hopefully complementary um, readings there. Um, I thought there was interesting crossover, especially between Mira and Isabel's poems. I thought there was some, some cross-pollination type vibe going on there. Um, as Henry said in the YouTube um, chat, you can find links to all the poets, like, you know, whether it's poems of theirs, uh, books of theirs, or, or their own websites, you can find that all underneath the, um, the video box thing that's me I'm very technological you see um, you can find all the bios and all links uh, down underneath uh, the video on on the YouTube page um, but yeah that that brings it to an end um, I would just like to say one thing which is we're going to have another one of these which is uh, super exciting um, that is going to be on the 20th of August. We've got two poets confirmed so far. One is Miggy Angel, who is a South London geezer, uh, big rhymer. Um, it's got this kind of quite metaphysical, uh, uh, rhythmic exploration of gentrification in South London. Um, and also Rachel Long, who um, is like an amazing poet on this. Yeah, uh, and it's got a first book coming out, I think next month with, um, can't remember, but she's she's very good. So 20th of August uh, for that one. Cool. Um, I think Henry's gonna do a little bit of an outro, um, but just finally, thank you so much to everyone who read today. Thank you everyone for joining. Hope you enjoyed it on this, on this beautiful sunny evening, <laughs> um, but, Luckily, it's near the summer solstice, so you still got like, you know, an hour or two of daylight. Uh, and now I will, I will pass over to Henry. Cheers, everyone, and um, yeah, in a bit. Hello, um, thank you, Kai, so much for that. And thank you to everyone else who was involved. Um, Isabel Daffy, Mira Matter, Jonah Nixon Webster, Ellen Dillon, and Kai Draper. Um, thank you for tuning in on this evening. It's very, very warm here, um, as is pr probably obvious from our cameras. Um, as Kai said, there'll be another one on the 20th of August, and I'm glad he mentioned a bit of he was on that. Um, we don't have anything 
uh, confirm that I can announce for the one in two weeks' time. Um, but if you're on the mailing list, you'll find out soon. On August the 6th, we should have Sarah Lounsback, who recently did the um, Derek Jarman and Prospect Cottage talk that a lot of you probably saw. She'll be back to talk about another chapter from the same book of Agnes Martin and the New Mexico Desert. Um, I'll post a link in the YouTube chat for the uh, mailing list if you're not on there and do sign up and we hope to see you back on August the 20th. I'm not going to go back to the group so we can all just say hello and thank you to each other. Um, hope to see you all soon. Thank you very much for tuning in. Take care, stay alert, wash your hands, stay safe.